Have you ever gone too fast on a street or freeway? When you saw the speed limit sign, did you just ignore it or think to yourself, it's safe to go faster? Or why would the freeway sign only be 65 miles an hour on a straight road? Yet, five miles down the road, you see a highway patrolman and immediately you take your foot off the gas or even press on the brake. Why is that? Consult for Kids has a 10 minute module to help you understand how your behavior is similar of that in the student in your after school program. Welcome to a Consult for Kids 10 minute module. This is the ownership model and agreements with me, Audrey Glenn. There is a cliche that goes like this, rules are meant to be broken. That seems to be the truth for adults who go too fast on the freeway or streets and kids who like to run down the hallway just after being reminded to walk. There is a simple two-part explanation, ownership and agreements. Pride of ownership extends beyond property. Ownership of expectations, a process, or a project promotes the ability of young people to practice self-discipline and ultimately own the results. Isn't that what we want from young people? Youth that own the results of the actions that they take and say, that's on me. So what is the ownership model and how do we build ownership in the after school program? There are four straightforward steps. Input, involvement, buy-in, and ownership. The first step is input. It is essential that before you begin the process of input, that you and students have an understanding that everything that is suggested may not become a reality, simply because it was suggested. This does not mean that input is not valued. Young people need to understand that input does shape results, because input, if nothing else, plants a seed that has the possibility of growing. 30 years ago, recycling was an input. Today, it is becoming more and more a way of life. Input is more than just getting to talk. It is being listened to as well. One of the ways that people feel listened to is to capture the key points and create a chart or group memory, a physical representation of what was heard. Additionally, it is important when a person provides input that the group asks clarifying questions to ensure that the group understands what is being said and will then ultimately summarize what was heard. The second step is involvement. Once the youth have had input, told you what they think, it is important that you involve them when selecting which input will be put into place and how it will look, sound, and feel when activated. Involvement is making a decision regarding what and how. What will we do and how will we do it? Involvement in the process of implementation helps young people feel in charge of making the decision and build a sense of ownership around the decision. And this is how pride in ownership takes the next step. Buy-in is the critical third step. It allows the decision to become more intentional rather than accidental. Buy-in is like building a habit. It is a commitment to keep the decision alive, for want of a better word. It is believing that the decision matters to the team and to the individuals within the team. Young people seem to intuitively understand that spending time intentionally on something is what you do when that something is important. Buy-in moves the decision to important. The fourth step is ownership. Ownership is the ultimate test of buy-in. Ownership occurs when you follow the decision whether or not someone in authority is watching. So when we talked about the speed limit earlier, a driver who has made the decision to drive the posted speed limit will travel at 65 miles an hour whether or not a highway patrol is there and visible. Ownership means that you have a particular way of behaving that is consistent with the decisions that were made because of your buy-in, which was built on your involvement, which began with your input. So let's quickly review. To apply the ownership model, you are going to start with input, followed by involvement, moving on to buy-in, and ending with ownership. So now that you understand the process of building ownership, what do you want to build ownership around? Consult for Kids would suggest that ownership needs to be built around the behavior and agreements about how you and the students are going to work together. You might be thinking, why agreements instead of rules? Think back to the law around driving 65 miles an hour. 
Now, theoretically, we agreed to follow these rules when we got our driver's license. Yet, time and time again, we break them. The difference is this. The perception of rules is that they were imposed on us by someone else, known or unknown, and that they are in the best interest of those known or unknowns instead of us. Agreements are, by their very nature, a decision that we have embraced. We agree that we are of the same opinion and that these agreements should be honored. This is a powerful distinction. Something someone else wants versus something that I want and you and I see eye to eye on. Agreements and ownership have a natural link. Consult for Kids would suggest that you build ownership around four simple agreements. Be safe, be respectful, be responsible, and have fun. At some point, you may wish to choose other agreements generated by yourself or by the students, but these four are a great place to start. First, these agreements are based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which begins with physiological needs being met, water, air, and food, and then building to safety, relationships, and self-sufficiency, which is embodied in responsibility. Second, these agreements are stated in positive terms that indicate the behavior that you want from young people rather than the behavior that is prohibited. It is important that you understand the importance of this. When you focus on what you do not want, young people often do not have an idea of what to replace that with, so they quickly revert back to the behavior that is undesired. When you focus on what you want, you are being very clear about the behavior that is appropriate. Let's take a look at the process of building ownership for agreements. So how do you build ownership around agreements that you put before youth? You do this in the exact same way as if you were asking for input on a project that students would be interested in doing. The difference is the way you say it. It is important that we are safe in the after school program. What does that mean to you? Young people are then asked for input. You want them to talk about physical and emotional safety and you would want them to talk about how safety looks different when you are in a multi-purpose room, a classroom, at the drinking fountain, in the restroom, walking down the hallway, playing a outdoor activity, or going on a field trip. After the youth have had plenty of opportunities to provide input, if you believe that they have missed something, you would ask, what do you think about walking down the hallway and the doors that swing open in the hall? Is this a challenge to safety? Then you can discuss the relevancy of this suggestion. After you receive input, you then involve the students in what and how safety, respect, and responsibility will be implemented in the program. During this phase, if you want to be certain that students are on the right track and that they have a clear understanding of what the expectations are about behavior, you can have them create posters, write a poem and lyrics to a song, perform skits, or do a tableau of freeze frame positive behaviors and so on to involve them in this process. The next step is buy-in, which can be encouraged by asking students to rate how well they are doing and keeping the agreements and how they can continue to strengthen performance. Finally, the students transition into ownership. In one after-school classroom of second graders, a young man was responsible for monitoring safe, respectful, and responsible implementation of the agreements around using the restroom and the drinking fountain. Without raising his voice or being intimidating, he only needed to ask two students how they were doing and whether they could think of a way to do a better job of keeping the agreements that were made. Students owned performance and were happy to follow the guidelines that they had indeed identified. So to review, use the ownership model. There are four easy steps. Input, involvement, buy-in, and ownership. Apply the ownership model to establish the agreements. Be safe, be respectful, be responsible, and have fun so that students have a clear understanding of what is expected of them because they have had input and they have been involved in implementing the after-school agreements and have developed consistency and buy-in across student behavior choices. And finally, they have owned this behavior and accepted the responsibility to become more and more self-disciplined. <laughs>
you would like to know more about the activities that you can utilize to make agreements concrete, check out our products tab on our website at www.consultforkids.com.